We welcome all of you tonight in the name of the Lord, those who have joined us on live stream. We treasure the fellowship of the saints. Yes. I'm glad we have such a large fellowship of the saints. Amen. This will be our 39th message in the second to the last in this series on the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> the whole history of mankind is leading up to an ultimate purpose that God has determined. It's mentioned in Ephesians 1, 9, and 10, and it's good to keep brushed up on what this purpose is because at any given time it may not appear as though any progress is being made toward this. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, how's that for grace? Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, that is, he opened up what was hidden, according to the good pleasure of him, by which he did good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. So this, this was independent of any influence outside of himself. Yeah. Amen. No personality outside of himself contributed yes. okay. to this purpose. And here it is, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that's when everything had been wrapped up, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, that's Christ. I was going to look, it has throughout history, especially looked sometimes, as though these things were ungatherable. That's how it had appeared. Today the saints of God are so scattered with such great distances between them that it looks like they couldn't be gathered. Of course, all that's on purpose. It isn't that God delights in his people being scattered. He, do, he doesn't, but he's, he's demonstrated in himself. See, the principalities and powers aside from humanity that they just haven't seen yet what God's capable of doing. Yeah. And men still have a lot of trouble with this. A lot of trouble with this. What, what God's able to do. They never think high enough, so God divulged to us what he's... Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. Men couldn't, they can't even think this high. Yeah. This involves such things as this leading up to this grand purpose. See, to get to, get to this purpose, <laughs> the creation and the maintenance of the people there have to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. The maintenance of the environment, the maintenance of his people in the environment, for them to be gathered together, both the environment and the people have to be maintained. Yeah, amen. Amen. And the people are going to be gathered, they have to be tested. The chosen was tested to confirm they really were his. Yeah. See? Uh -huh. yes. And the testing uh, is a lot of on-watchers most of them unseen. And in this purpose, we're going to gather together everything into one, and that means the inimical powers have to be subdued. Mm -hmm. Until they're subdued, they have to be controlled. Yes, yes. They can't get out of hand. Yeah. It confirms the, the reality and necessity of King Jesus. This is just a pretty language yeah. that Jesus is king. He really is. Amen. But this is confirmed in the way God manages all these affairs up to the consummation. We will find that the grand consummation, when he gathers together all things in one in Christ, is a perfectly logical conclusion. Amen. We'll find it. That's, we'll look at this and say that's just the way it ought to end. 
Now let's look at this. See, we're going to talk tonight about Satan's final effort. God's going to let him make one final effort. So what have we seen up to this point? We have seen the superiority of Christ. It's been declared, it's been demonstrated. There wasn't anybody that wasn't subject to him when he was in the flesh, to say nothing of now that he's in heaven. There never was anyone that wasn't subject to Christ. The only exception you might be was when he was an infant, and then God took care of him, and angels took care of him. And but when Jesus came of age, there wasn't anybody that could contend with Jesus, either demons or Satan or anybody else. Here's what Jesus said. He said this when he was glorified. After he had been glorified, he said this. He says, I am the Alpha. We'd say the A. And the Omega. We'd say the Z. The beginning. And the ending. Day of the Lord. You can't be the beginning and the ending without being everything in between, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saith the Lord, which is, which was, yeah. and which is to come. Yeah, right? That yeah. takes it. That, what, there's nothing missing there. It says the Almighty. Yeah, I, John, who am also your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus, was in the isle which is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus. That's why I was, imp I was imprisoned, exiled. I was exiled in the isle of Patmos so I could get this, get this message to give to you. That the Lord Jesus is where it starts. Yes. And the Lord Jesus is where it ends. Yeah, yeah. The Lord Jesus, that accounts for what is. That accounts for what was. And that accounts for what is to come. We've been introduced to Christ in that marvelous capacity. The announced consummation has been made in the Revelation. Revelation 1 7, Behold, he cometh. We'd say he is coming. Every eye shall see him, they that pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail. <laughs> all kindreds of the earth shall wail. You don't want to be wailing when Jesus comes, let me tell you. All kindreds of the earth, everyone that had their genesis in the earth only, they're all going to wail. It's a hopeless wail. It's a helpless wail. It's a we can't do anything about it wail. It's we're not ready wail. All kindreds of the earth will wail. He's coming. He's coming. Hold on, brethren. He's He's coming. All the kindreds of the earth are going to wail. They may not be wailing now, but they're going to wail in. Amen. And we've seen uh, we've seen the vulnerability of the churches in the first century. In the Revelation, there was Ephesus. They left their first love. There was Smyrna. They suffered tribulation. See, that it's a sign of weakness, see. They suffered tribulation. They endured it, but they suffered tribulation. Pergamus, one of their members, was martyred. Antipas. But, so in the weakness of the... If you take just left Jesus out from your vision, and all of a sudden you see a lot of things that tell you, we're not at the consummation yet. The church at uh, Pergamos, they had some people there that 
held to the doctrine of Balaam and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. This is before the end of the first century. We have the church of Thyatira. They had a false prophetess named Jezebel. That was her spiritual name. Jezebel there that taught God's servant, Christ's servants to commit fornication and eat meat offered to idols. You got the church at Sardis, it was just dead. Church at Philadelphia, it just had a little strength. See what it had been under severe spiritual pressure, it stood fast, but it was weak, had a little strength. It was oppressed by the synagogue of Satan. So when you hear that what this is this happened with Jesus sitting on the throne in heaven, all this happened. Then the Laodicean church, they were lukewarm, but they were boastful. They said, we don't have need of anything. We got it all. Pfft. We got it all. So I'm showing you, somebody's got to wrap this thing up. The church isn't going to be able to wrap it up. And it just as well stop trying to wrap it up and concentrate on standing fast. Amen. Well, there's still people in sectarian circles that talk about let's get out there and win all we can and, and then Jesus will come sooner. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this is taught. Uh -huh. Not just by a handful of people. We'll bring the kingdom in. We'll usher the kingdom in. Let's get down to business. Send your money in here because it's going to take a lot of money to do this. They, they tell you this, too. It's going to take a lot of money. The work of God takes a lot of money. When God says, I, the silver and the gold belong to me, not, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. In the early church, poor folk got more done than a lot of rich folk got done today. So I've told you there are the weakness of the churches. So someone, someone's got to wrap this thing up because as time progressed, the church got worse. It didn't get better. It got worse. And yet God has said he's working on something that's going to end up, a grand, grand purpose is going to end up with everything being together. It doesn't look like that's the way it's going. And we also we were told in this revelation about the absolute frustration of the devil. It's in a pictorial way. The people of God are depicted as a woman that had a crowns on her head. That is, she was a reigning type woman having seven heads. Then there was a red, great red dragon that popped out of nowhere. It had seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns. and just to show you what kind of power he had, he'd pull down a third mm, yeah. of a heavenly host. We're not talking about small numbers here, brethren. We're not talking about human beings here. Pulled them down, let them astray. That's a picture of, lead, of them, him leading them astray so they were willing to leave their first habitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're willing to leave it. Uh -huh. Here's this woman depicting the people of God. And the man child is the savior is going to be born of this, of these people, and Satan's crouching right there by her womb, ready to devour the man child as soon as he's been born. And here's how the scripture put it. As soon as he was born, he was caught up into heaven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it took thirty three years when he was caught up into heaven. But the idea is that Satan couldn't do a thing about the birth of Jesus. He couldn't do. A, he couldn't convert the death of Jesus to anything harmful. He couldn't interfere with the resurrection of Jesus. He couldn't interfere with the ascension of Jesus, and he can't interfere with him coming back, even though he dreadfully wants to. He's gone to a full extent to do so. We have known and seen in Revelation. We are exposed to the base of operation of the kingdom of God begins in the fourth chapter. Now, some people say the fourth chapter begins with the church being absent from the world. See, these people don't listen to these people. Yeah, right. They went to school, but they went to the wrong school. Right. They do not know what they're talking about. I don't care how many books they've written. Mm -hmm. 
they don't know what they're talking about, but because the church is so weak and insipid and uninformed, it's bought into all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. John's caught up in the spirit, mm -hmm. and immediately he was in the spirit, behold a throne. He didn't say, behold an absent church. Well, this, now this, this is what people teach concerning this. The majority of people that have enough nerve to even talk about the talk about the text. Most people don't have enough nerve to talk about the text. But the people talk about it say the church is absent at this point. But it's, he didn't see a place where the, the earth is. He didn't see the church. If the church had been caught up, that would be one of the first things John saw. But he didn't see that. What he saw was a throne. I saw a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So it's an occupied throne, not a vacant throne. So Jesus isn't sitting on David's throne. Is this so? Is this so? Then that means David's throne is vacant. John saw one sitting in the throne. He was to look upon like a jasper and sardine stone as at the glory of God. And there was a rainbow round the throne, and the sight like unto an emerald rainbow. That happened after the wrath was passed. Didn't happen after the church was gone. Yeah. Happened after the wrath. Right after reconciliation had been accomplished, that idea. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. These are the seven spirits of God. He's, this is the base of operation. This is headquarters. Yeah, amen. Amen. And he saw headquarters. What a sight it must have been to see. And he, uh, he saw in the seventh chapter, he saw the conversion of the Jews. He saw this body of people, 144,000, following the Lamb, wherever he went, you know. And, his holy being said, oh, who are these? <laughs> God didn't know who they were. He said, well, this is the whole house of Israel. I mean, can you, can you really be any more plain than that? Right. This is the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Say, well, that's another word for the church. Well, he says he names the 12 tribes. You're going to say the church is the 12 tribes? Come on. Uh -huh. People ought to at least be honest. Amen. Where is the church ever called the 12 tribes of Israel or the whole house of Israel? Is the conversion of Israel is what he saw. And then it goes on in the 14th chapter, it elaborates on it, that when this happened, there was a great swell of knowledge that filled the earth. And then in the 12th chapter, we saw that there in the 20th chapter, we saw the binding of Satan. He would, it did, God didn't even have to enter into the binding. Um, Jesus, the exalted Christ, didn't have to enter into the binding. He just dispatched an angel. Right, yeah. Well, I'm there, you know, take him and open up. Here's a key. Open up the bottomless pit. That, was op that wasn't opened up in hell. It was opened up by someone from hell. He's opened up by an angel in heaven. Open up that bottomless pit. We're not going to let anything out. We're going to put something in it. Satan was put in it, and he was bound, restrained, yeah. not able to do what he wanted to do. So that, that's what we've seen up, up to this point in the Revelation. Now Satan is loose for a little season, just a, just a little season, just he lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, but Satan a little, little, <laughs> little season. He lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, but Satan, he got a little season. That's all he got. Just a little season to do the best he could. Do the best he could. And he goes out, our text says, to deceive the nations. See, he was kept while he was in the pit. He was kept from deceiving the nations, which is what accounts for the sudden spread of the yeah. truth. Uh -huh. If you can uh, keep Satan from deceiving the nations, this puts a new, a new slant on evangelism. Yeah, amen. Yes. <laughs> but if he's not, well, that's another story. So he is, uh, he's restrained. Now, those who know Scripture will recognize 
Some of this language is found in the book of Ezekiel, which was, he, it's a type, like a type. Ezekiel so, showed uh, it in a mysterious form, what is being clarified more in the Revelation. I'll read Ezekiel 38, 14 through, 17, uh, 14 through 17. Therefore, son of man, prophes I say this because the scripture says that Satan's going to gather Gog uh -huh. in our text, Gog and Magog. Uh -huh. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus saith the Lord God, <clears throat> in that day when my people of Israel dwell safely, shalt thou not know it? And thou shalt come, see, you'll know, look, I can get him now. They're back in the land now. Yeah. I can get them now. And thou shalt come from thy place, which is the bottomless pit, out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee. Historically, people consider that that is Russia. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's Russia or not. But Thou shalt come to thy place. Thou and many people shall come with thee, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. Thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud shall cover the land. See, it's parallel. It's the text that we just read in Revelation. And I will bring thee against my land. I, I, I will bring thee against, I will bring thee against my land. Not Satan. I, I will bring thee against my land. That the heathen may know me. <coughs> and I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord. Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my service, the prophets of Israel prophesied in those days many years, that I would bring thee against them? I told you I was going to do this. That's what he's fulfilling. I want you to see this is what he's fulfilling in the Revelation. When he says Gog and Magog, he's talking about this prophecy. The prophecy sounds like it's just Israel back then, but that's because this, was, this wasn't as fully known at that time. And then our text says, fire came down from heaven. Here's what it says in uh, Ezekiel. It shall come to pass at the same time when you come up and gather against them. At the same time when God shall come up against the land of Israel, saith the Lord, that my fury shall come up in my face. At the same time. Doesn't sound like there's going to be some kind of battle fought here. At the same time, my fury shall come up in my face. And when Satan is loose, to, going to, our text said he's going to compass the saints. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. All right, that's the fulfillment and the explanation of what he said in, mm -hmm. in Ezekiel. Yeah. My jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. When God sees Satan working, he gets downright angry. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake in my presence. And the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brothers. This is the armies that, <laughs> the armies that gather, they're going to kill, start killing each other off. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great held hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Yes in the revelation. This is part of gathering together. Before God wraps this thing up, yeah. everybody's going to know who God is and yeah. what Satan is and how powerless he is and how powerful God is. Yeah. Before he wraps this thing up, there's going to be a public yeah. demonstration. Amen. Amen. Now, what do we learn from all these things? Well, there's a number of things. 
Conversion is not the end of the matter. Now, the church has been taught it is. Mm -hmm. If you can just get him in, that's not the end of the matter. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to contend with this. That it's going to look, before the end comes, it's going to look like there's no hope for the church. Mm -hmm. Satan's going to compass the saints. It's going to look like he's going to snuff them out. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the church at that time is going to be bragging about how powerful they were. No one in Laodicea like Laodicea is going to say, we have need of nothing. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to be saying that. Conversion is not the end of the matter. As long as Satan, here's another thing we learn. As long as Satan's not cast in the lake of fire, there's potential danger. He's not in the lake of fire yet. He's not in our text. He wasn't in the lake of fire. He's not cast in the lake of fire until after all this. Then he was cast in the lake of fire. But until he's cast into the lake of fire, you can't fold your hands. You cannot assume you're safe. You cannot live as though everything's going to turn out all right. You're going to have to arm yourself with the same mind as Christ. When he was in the earth, he was never complacent. Get a certain mindset. You're going to have to put on the whole armor of God. You're going to have to do it. You're going to have to take your spiritual weaponry. You're going to have to do it. Even when he's bound for a season, because he's going to be able to do some things, but not like he wants to. Not like he wants to do them. As long as flesh exists, there's potential danger. If all you know is you're in the body, that's recent enough to be alert. Have your ears opened. And to know what the times are, Sister Barb Minister tonight. You gotta know what the times are. As long as you're in the flesh, this is this is the way it is. It does and you also learn from his text, he went out he went out to deceive the nations and he gathered he gathered all his people. It doesn't take Satan long to rally his troops. All God has to do is just lift his hand and Satan can do a lot in a short period of time. In my opinion, we're seeing some of this happen now. See, all of a sudden, pe wicked people have seemed to have a lot of power and a lot of influence. People say, let's all rally together, and let's squash this, let's march in the street and hold placards. That's what we're going to do. That'll do it. No, it won't do it. Won't do it at all. God demonstrating something, and he's not demonstrating the strength of his people. He's demonstrated his strength. Yeah, amen. And he's going to let this look like it's out of control. Yeah, yeah. On purpose, he's going to do this. On purpose, Jesus is going to be born with a king trying to kill him. On purpose, that's going to happen. On purpose, after he's two years old, he's going to have to run for safety because the king's out to kill him, see? On purpose, this is done. On purpose. It doesn't take Satan long to rally his wicked people. And salvation cannot be maintained by rel relatively perfect conditions. See? Satan is bound, hindered, restrained, held in, as Judah said, tethered. But a lot can happen with Satan tethered. <laughs> He gathered all, there were some people he could gather. Perhaps some people's love waxed cold. Hmm? We know there's a great falling away. There's indications there's going to be one after the great, without knowledge Lord, cover the earth, the waters cover the sea. There's going to be something happen that all of a sudden the church is going to be outnumbered and encompassed by the wicked. So another, another kind of falling away. Something like that's going to happen. So salvation can't be maintained, even though Satan's bound, even though the Jews have been converted, even though the knowledge of the Lord is covering the earth as the waters cover the sea, man on his own is not going to be able to maintain this state. God's going to show this, see, because nobody believed it. Nobody would believe this if God didn't show it. And people can remain wicked even though they don't appear wicked. So here Satan goes out, gathers, 
hostile forces, did they, while well, he was bound, they didn't look hostile. Yeah. Huh. But they were. Right. They were just, if Satan's restrained, his people are restrained. Huh. If Satan's hindered, all his, fo all his cohorts are hindered. Principals and powers and the sons of the wicked, when they're all hindered. So they could, you could, Satan can have children even though it doesn't look like they're his children. Something else we learned, God's people tend to cluster together. Compass the saints, that means they were, <laughs> they were together. They were together. And we see, we see this propensity in Israel. I remember when there was a great influx of people to Israel and Benjamin's uh, physician was a Jew. Isn't this right? Benjamin's doctor was a Jew. And he dropped out of his practice. And June asked him why. He said, well, I'm going back to Israel. Now, he was a specialist. He sure didn't work for nothing. But see, you see in the Jews, the Jews present this kind of a picture that when they can get back to the homeland, they do. It happened in 48, and I understand in a less than a year, the population doubled in Israel. They're still flowing back in. They're getting back. See, when, Pete, when God works with people, genuinely works with people, this inclination is like bread into them. They sense there's a place they belong, and they want to get back to it. Now, the church, the church has botched this whole thing up. And it's serious business. After there's been a greater revelation and a king sitting at God's right hand and everything required for God, life and godliness has been given and all spirits are blessed in heavenly places for the church to botch this thing up is unforgivable. Nobody should try and explain it. It's wrong any way you look at it. It violates principles that were under an inferior covenant. God's people will cluster together. Amen. And at the time when a, this crisis is arising, they were together. Amen. There will be an even greater demonstration of the exceeding greatness of the power than can be experienced in the earth now. God's going to, the enemies think they're gathering to destroy God's people, but really it's God gathering them so he can destroy them. Amen. See, that's, that's, that's actually what's happening. At the end, that's what's going to happen. Amen. So if we see the wicked all of a sudden joining forces, now you got to think this way, brother. Yeah. You see the wicked joining forces, you can say, well, things are out of control. No, no, things are in control. Yeah. God's gathering these forces together yeah. to deliver the coup de grace. Oh, hey. Excuse me, but I like thinking about it. <laughs> and after this, the work of salvation will be finished. See, then he will have demonstrated all the things that he intended to demonstrate. The devil will not be able to be loosed anymore. No more. The present heaven and earth can be removed. There's no further need for them. The saints of God are going to put on immortality. There's no further need for any de demonstration yes. of the power of God in an earthen vessel. No more. That'll all be proof, see, yes. Amen. in this one great destruction of the wicked one. Yes. It'll all be proved. All this stuff that we've been told, yes. there will not be a soul in heaven or earth or under the earth that will doubt yes. the truth of what we've been told in the gospel. Amen. Everybody's going to know Jesus is king. Everybody's going to know there's nothing they can do about it. Everybody's going to know that at will, he can destroy the devil and all his hosts in a single fell swoop. Just take care of it. He, they're going to know that he can sustain his people, even during a very difficult times. <clears throat> as long as the earth remains to save, there's some things they're going to have to do. 
And if there's anyone that says they're saved that aren't doing this, they better be waking up. As long as the earth remains, the saved must fervently contend for the faith. They got to do this. Because if it looks now like maybe it's not so bad, it's going to look like it's so bad. Eventually, God's going to work when it looks so bad. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. And vigilance, always alert, not allowing anyone to come in by sneak attack or come in unawares or caught off guard. And in a moment, the dominance of lust or pleasure or this sort of thing in a moment can make you unaware and be caught with no oil in your lamp. Now is the time to perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. And until this destruction happens, this has got to be kept up. Perfect holiness yes. in the fear of the Lord and walk in the Spirit. If they don't do this, the people don't do this, when Satan's loose, he will be able to gather them. Yes. Right. It's going to look, when Satan gathers the people, it's going to look like Christianity is not anything. I'm using the world's term here, but it's going to look like we just will abandon it because it looks like it didn't work. It's going to look like Satan, it's going to look like his side was right. That it was really better to indulge the fleshly appetite. So you've got to be vigilant, perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord. You've got to keep, keep regularly stripping off and stripping out of your life. Things that pamper the flesh and feed the flesh. You gotta, you gotta quit feeding the flesh. Just, yeah. See, we're not, we don't want to feed the flesh. I didn't say don't want to feed the flesh. I said don't do it. Yeah. Amen. You can, you can do it in a moment of weakness. You yeah. can just serve a gourmet meal to your flesh. Yeah. That's right. And walk in the spirit. <laughs> this is possible for Satan to overturn a person. This is possible, as is seen by falling away, Hebrews 6, 6. Mm -hmm. It is seen by denying the power thereof, yes, 2 Timothy 3, 5. It is seen by the phenomenon of departing from the faith, uh -huh. 1 Timothy 4, 1. By not bringing forth fruit, uh -huh. Luke 8, 13 and 14 and leaving your first love, Revelation 2, 4, and a whole lot more. So God, God has spoken to us yes. in such a manner as we know. God's purpose is eternal purpose. You will not participate in it until, unless you get on board now. Amen. Unless you get on board to what God's doing. Uh -huh. I'm not inferring that you haven't. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to, don't want to take any chance if someone yeah. misses this. Yeah. You got to take advantage of God's great salvation while the door is open. Because there's going to come a time when the door is going to be shut. That'll be before the end of the world. That'll be before Jesus comes, so to speak. Door is going to be shut, and all the laggers behind they may pound on the door, but they're not going to get in. Now every one of us can prepare. All the resources needed now to prepare for this have been supplied. Not growing up into Christ in all things is totally unreasonable and totally unacceptable. Failure to bring forth fruit unto God is spiritually lethal. You don't bring forth fruit to you. You're not bringing forth fruit to us. You're bringing forth fruit to God, and he's pretty picky about what he eats. And if you don't think he is, you just need to check up on the prophets. Just offer him a lame lamb, see what he says. Hmm? Or fail to offer the first fruits to him. See what he says about that. Or take what he gives you and offer it to somebody else. See, God's demonstrated and he's very particular about when he when he causes fruit, you've got to be given to him. Resources that enable victory, they confirm the superiority of Christ. 
the fact that you can have something from God that will insulate you against satanic success. You'll be tempted. I mean, if he tempted Jesus, do you really think he's not going to tempt you? But there's a there's provision to to endure the temptation without succumbing to it. Amen. And the word to the church, to us all, is to prepare by taking advantage of all these resources. And I, though a great number, if not the majority of you, have done this. I commend you for it. I don't. I don't take this for granted. We've all seen people that we think started, maybe they did start, maybe there was a legitimate start, but they, they ended out there in a never, never land. They, why? Because they, did, they had an unguarded moment. It probably started just a moment, just, just an unguarded moment. Satan entered in. And whatever you do, you, you look forward to what God said he's going to do. You know Satan's going to have a last effort. Final effort is what I call it. A final effort to bring the saints down. But in in his effort, he'll be brought down. Yes. Amen. I I bet you to bank on that. Amen. Brother Jason has our exhortation tonight.